Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we're going to talk about why use React Cree. So before we answer this question, let us answer what is React Cree. I made a video on React Cree before. It's like introduction to React Cree. So if you have time, please do check that out. But for a short introduction, if you never used React Cree before, React Cree is just a simple um, way that you can manage your server-side state. For example, uh, you can manage all the state that you get from your asynchronous data calls from REST API or any kind of API, third-party APIs. You can manage that really easily using React Query without having them in a separate uh, global state like Redux or context or anything you want to. So, and also React Query manages caching as well. I have again covered a lot of all these topics in my previous videos, so please check it out. In this video, we're gonna focus on talking about why use React Query. So, if you take any kind of application, a React JS application, you tend to always have some sort of a global state because it's really a great way to kind of like have your data in a common place which prevents uh, unnecessary stuff like props, prop drilling, and have easy way to for all your components to get your data. And this global state can be divided into two parts, which is the server state and the client state. So uh, we can have a global state can be of two types, which is the server state Oh, typo and you have the client state right so server state is all the data that is uh, got from your asynchronous API calls like from your rest API from any kind of third-party sites for example if you're making a to-do list then your to-do list that is there from your database that you get using an a sort of asynchronous API call will come under your server state Client state is something that is used inside your app. Like for example, your modal states or your uh, alert states, your theme states, whether it's dark theme or light theme, all that is uh, relevant to your client side application goes under your client state. Usually in global state, we have these two stuff combined. So if you're using something like Redux or Context, you have these two in the same place. And Managing the server state can be a bit of a headache. For example, let's say you're making a to-do list app. Whenever you get data from your to-do list, you need to append it. And whenever you delete data, you need to delete it from your state so that it's reactive. And you need to manage all this stuff. And this is time taking. Uh, and it can be mundane work to do. There's a lot of uh, manual work to do. And what React Query does is it solves this, all the headaches that is there in managing your server state. So, for example, if you use React Query's hooks, like the use query hook or the use pagination hook, there are, there are a bunch of hooks in React Query. Uh, if you see in the docs right here, there is a bunch of examples, custom hooks. So there's a bunch of stuff uh, over here. Right, so queries, uh, these are the the queries is your use query hook to get data. You, you have the new mutation hook where, where you can like update data. So I have again covered all this in videos that I did before. I'll leave a link in the description below. So React Query helps us to manage all this really easily. So the one, uh, one uh, awesome thing about React Query is no manual updates. No manual updates. So this means that um, if you just give your link to your use query hook uh, that you get from React Query, you don't need to manually say that I need to get this data from an API and append it to my global state. You don't need to do that, all those manual works. Re React Query takes care of all that. And this doesn't even need to go in a separate state. For example, if you get data using React Query hook, the hook itself will return the state. And what you can do is you can have your use query hook that you get from React Query, and you can write this use query hook in a custom hook of your own. So you can use that use query hook which has your specific API in anywhere in your application. 
So this means you don't need to repeat code. You have some sort of a global uh, API state for that. Uh, so it really helps in managing client server state, sorry, server state. So now you have a clear separation between what is your client state, what is your server state, and all your server state can be handled using React Query. You don't need to manually update it. You don't need to manually maintain it. It's all taken care of React Query. And the next big thing about React Query is, sorry, it's number two, caching. So what is, uh, so caching, what is caching? So caching is uh, basically getting rid of unnecessary API calls so that everything is uh, as smooth as possible. I think I'm right. But anyway, what React Query does is, for example, let's say you have written an API, you have an API to get to-do lists and you use the use query hook from React Query to get those to-do lists, right? So let's just say you when you, when you go into an app, you get the to-do lists. So you got the to-do list now. So React Query has this to-do list. And what React Query does is it, you, you need to give it a key. Again, this all is covered in my previous video of React Query. And let's just say you already got the to-do list. And now you, you, you the user again does something which hits the API again. And it gets the same set of to-do lists again. When this happens, what React Query does, it does is it compares the previous to-do list and the new to-do list that is got from your client-side API calls. And if it is the same, it returns the to-do list from its cache. This, so because of that, there's no loading, there's no uh, unnecessary fetching, everything is smooth. So the first time you get data, you get the loading because it gets the data. The second time you get it, React Query compares the new to-do list with the old to-do list. And if it's the same, it just gets it from its cache that it maintains. So there's no loading load, loading again, and everything is really smooth. If you want to implement this manually, it can be time taking, but React Query does this in, uh, uh, does this out of the box. So it's really smooth. It's really great. So this is uh, actually like the major major awesome thing about using React Query. The other thing is obviously you can like have like I said before, you can have all this uh, React Query hooks in your common hook so that it's much more easier to do in, in your custom hooks are not common hooks that so that it's much more easier to build and next he also gives the, the uh, its own dev tools so that you can also debug stuff easily so that's it guys uh, this is why react query is great whenever you have any kind of rest api it's really great if you can use react query to manage all your uh, state management that is involved with your rest api and you can have uh, your client side state in anything you want. Like uh, for this, you can use context, uh, or you can use uh, recoil, or you can use zstand. I don't know, is it US? Uh, I don't know if the spelling is right. I'm sorry if it's not. So you can use any of this for your client state, but your server state, you can use React Query. So. That's it. This is the reason why you use React Query to manage your server state. Uh, it, it, it removes a lot of pain, removes a lot of headaches. It just is really easy to work with. If you're working with a small application, uh, definitely use React Query. It saves a lot of time. And um, yeah, so React Query is great. Uh, I hope you check it out if you didn't check it out already. Uh, and also, please check out my previous videos on React Query. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. It helps this channel a lot. Uh, so if you have any more ideas on like any more better points on which something that I missed on this topic, please let me know in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.